my common philosophy here is at some point, you have to ignore your GPA. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 284. And welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I take your questions directly from the pre-med forums over at premedforms.com, specifically the non-traditional pre-med discussion. And today I have a doozy, a common issue that I see come up with non-traditional students, students who need to take a post back, who are trying to overcome past GPA problems. And our poster today is no different. Before we jump into that, though, I want to talk about the MCAT Minute brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. As you are studying for the MCAT, as you are planning out your schedule, please, please, please be aware that the MCAT is not this unlimited resource that you can continue to dip into whenever you think you need to take the MCAT, right? So obviously you only want to take it once, but a lot of students I talk to just go out and try it. No prep, no nothing. They got apparently unlimited money to throw at the AAMC and they go, I'm just going to go take the test. I know I'm going to avoid it. I just want to see what it's like. And then they go, okay, I see what it's like. And then they go back into the test with a little bit more pressure, but they're like, oh, you know what? I avoided it the first time. I'll avoid it again. And then they go back again and again and again. And then at some point they go, "Uh uh-oh, like I've never really prepared for the test. And now I've taken it five times. I only have two more tests that I can take. The AAMC a couple years ago implemented lifetime testing rules. You can only take it three times a year, four times in two years, and seven times total. So as you're preparing for the MCAT, please be aware that you only want to take it once. But yes, you can take it more than once, but only seven times total and those other limitations that I mentioned earlier. If you need some help with your schedule, Go sign up for a free account over at Blueprint MCAT. Use their amazing study planner tool to let them know how often you plan on studying, how much time you have each week, when you want to take the test, and let them give you a personalized study plan that works for you. Go check them out at blueprintmcat.com. So let's go ahead and jump into our question today, all about fixing a poor GPA and still having questions about whether or not the student is going to succeed. Our student says, I'm in my early 30s and have been taking courses, volunteering, and getting shadowing hours for the past few years while working full-time in my current career. I feel like I was on the winning side of this journey. My post GPA is a 4.0, and the experience I have had so far only confirmed my belief that I want to go into medicine. I will be taking my MCAT next spring and applying to med school next spring. Now backtrack to my undergrad from over 10 years ago. I have a bachelor's and master's in business. I was a decent student that got some A's and B's. But the summer after my freshman year, I experienced some tragic events and didn't really have the resources to cope. I withdrew from some classes in summer semester. In the following fall and spring semester, I experienced depression and simply didn't attend my classes. I have two semesters of Fs sprinkled with a few withdrawals. I was put on academic probation and suspension for a semester, got the help I needed, and came back stronger than before, getting As and Bs, but this time more As. Now, I knew this would affect my GPA when I applied to med school, but I didn't anticipate it affecting my GPA greatly or affecting my science GPA at all. Today, I put my entire length of coursework into math, and I'm feeling extremely discouraged. My overall GPA is a 3.17, and my overall science GPA is a 3.35. My science GPA was affected because one of the courses I took in my undergrad was Survey of Calculus, and this is one of the courses I withdrew from and had an F in twice during my very bad year in college. I can't explain how discouraging this feels. When I think of being compared to other traditional students with 317, 335 GPA, it feels unfair because I am currently a 4.0 student. I am more mature and have developed beyond my struggles and the level of success I attained back then. I'm unsure how to proceed. 
Should I delay my application by a year and take more classes to improve my GPA? I really don't want to do this because I am a non-trad in my 30s and want to maximize my career length as a doctor. I also did some scenarios in MAPS, seeing how much I could bring my GPA up with additional coursework, and the change was very minimal. It seems like I would have to take several semesters of classes to make a significant difference. Am I going to get screened out of some schools automatically based on my GPA? Is there any way to avoid this through contacting adcoms before applying? Or how do I include an explanation of my prior performance into my application? It seems like the only place for this would be my personal statement, and I don't want to veer off of what is important to discuss. For some background info, I'm a married female in my early 30s. My husband and I hope to have some kids sometime in the near future. At this point, I plan the plan until I get in to and begin med schools for me to continue working in my current career full-time in anticipation of the cost that med school will be and the fact that only one of us will be working to support us. This is probably the most common scenario that I see among non-traditional students who struggle early on in their coursework. Now, this student, it looks like, was about a year out of all of their coursework, a year of their courses is what's setting them back. And when you enter in all of that information into software like Mapped, which go sign up for a free account, free two-week trial over at mapped.com, M-A-P-P-D.com, and, and don't lie to yourself anymore. I, what I assume this student was doing was just plugging along, going, my GPA is going to be fine. My GPA is going to be fine. And then she stopped lying to herself, entered in all of the information, and then saw what happened. And that's what MAPT allows you to do, among many other things. But, but one of the things that students love the most is just seeing all of the GPAs there, seeing the graphs, seeing the trends, seeing what medical schools will see. So this student is concerned that her one year or so of bad grades is going to prevent her from going to medical school because she's going to be going to be compared to all of the quote unquote traditional students who didn't uh, have a bad year or a bad semester. And right off the bat, I want to tell you that medical schools have the ability to see everything. And so students who fear a lower GPA, even though they have a great upward trend with a 4.0 post back, the one thing I would have loved to see as an extra bit of information here is how many credits was that post back? I would love to see that. How many credits was that post back? Because that will tell me an increased trend. It sounds like potentially junior and senior year were good as well. And then this post back, how many trends? But you know what else she has? She has a master's as well. So there's even more coursework there. And that's what's at the end of the day, what's happening here is there's just so many credits. The denominator of this math equation is so big that the more credits you add to try to improve your GPA, you're not going to improve it much. And so my common philosophy here is at some point, you have to ignore your GPA. You just have to just put your blinders on and go, you know what? I know that number's not going to look great. 335, not going to look great. It's not terrible, but it's not going to look great. 317, overall, not great. You have to ignore that number when you are a student in this specific situation. When you have a semester or two semesters with Fs sprinkled throughout, your GPA is not going to be good, period. That's just the way math works, unfortunately. But you know what has happened since then? This student has figured out how to move past that. They didn't allow, she didn't allow that one year to define her whole academic career. Right? One year does not define you. One semester does not define you. One course, OCHEM, does not define you. And so as you're going through this process, you're allowed to make mistakes. I don't want you to make mistakes, but you're allowed to make mistakes. If you look at admissions policies throughout the country, 
every medical school will do something different with a student like this. I talked to my, my good friend, the director of admissions at University of Illinois Chicago, Dr. Layla Amiri. And you know what? That was episode 288, I believe. It's either 188 or 288 of the pre-med years. Go listen to that and listen to how they have empathy for students who have gone through tough situations. And as an admissions committee, they have the ability to subtract out. <laughs> it's a fun little sound effect for everyone listening <laughs> to that. They, they have the ability to subtract out a whole year of your GPA. They go, you know what? Life happens. And we understand that life happens. And we don't want one bad year to define your whole application. And so University of Illinois Chicago, they have the ability to recalculate your GPA with your worst GPA removed. That whole year just gone. Poof. And your GPA calculation that they'll recalculate will completely change the outlook of, of potentially your ability to go to school at University of Illinois Chicago. There are other schools out there, and I, I won't name them all because every school has something different, but there are other schools I've talked to, they have a last 20 science credits rule. That's how they calculate your GPA. There are other schools that are the last 60 credit hours overall, graduate and undergrad. That's how they calculate your GPA. Every school can do something different to manipulate the data. And that's why in MAPPED, again, MAPPD.com, we don't just show you what your GPA number is. We have, you, if you click on more details or view details, whatever, whatever that link says, you have the ability to see cumulative, a running total of freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, graduate, et cetera, post back. And you can see your GPA at each of those steps. Or you have a class standing GPA. So we can see your 3.7 freshman GPA. We can see that 1.5 sophomore GPA. Then we can see a 3.7 junior GPA, 3.7 senior GPA, 4.0 post back GPA. That trend is phenomenal. We can see that. Medical school admissions committees can see that. Now, will they do anything about it? That's the question. And so for this student, at the end of the day, time heals all wounds. So a 4.0 post back GPA is phenomenal. But if it's only five credits, that doesn't mean anything. If it's 10 credits, probably not enough. 20 credits, you're getting closer. If you have 30 or 40 credits of a post back GPA at a 4.0 GPA, on top of what it sounds like having a junior and senior year, where you were also relatively successful, that will overshadow your bad year. It will at the far majority of schools out there. Will there be schools out there that will outright reject you? Yes, there will be. But there are plenty more out there that will give you an opportunity to explain what happened. And they'll do that usually in secondary essays. So kind of going back to the, the questions at hand here for the student, the student wants to know, where do I explain it? And typically, if a medical school wants to know about struggles academically, they'll ask it in their secondary essays. Explain any grades less than a B minus. Explain any academic discrepancies. Explain this, explain that. They'll ask about those things. And so as you are filling out your application, you probably don't need to put it in your personal statement. You potentially could if you want. I call it a red flag statement in my, my personal statement book. You could potentially briefly, very briefly mention it, but you don't have to because the schools that want to know something about it will ask you about it. And the far majority of students that I talk to who have gone through similar situations and end up interviewing at medical schools, they don't get questions about it because at the end of the day, you've proven academic capability by doing well, finishing out your undergrad, hopefully doing well in your master's program, and then crushing your post back with your 4.0 GPA. So as you're going through this process, as you're looking at those numbers in MAPT, ignore the numbers. And so I hope, I hope, I hope this is helpful for you to give you some confidence that you have done a lot already to continue to move forward, to, 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 to 
overcome that bad year that you've had. And as you continue forward, keep doing that. And understand that the story that you put forward, showing that dip in grades and then overcoming is a huge win already for medical schools because that will give them the confidence that if and when you struggle in medical school, you've already had to overcome to get to where you are now. And hopefully that gives them some reassurance that you're going to overcome again. I hope this was helpful for you on your journey to medical school. If you have a similar question or or whatever question related to being a non-traditional pre-med student, go to premedforms.com. Sign up for a free account if you haven't already. And find the non-traditional pre-med discussion and ask your question there. And hopefully we'll answer it here on the Old Pre-Meds podcast. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds podcast. Don't forget to check out blueprintmcat.com.